Hi everyone, in this first week of Easter, this bright week, we say Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. And we welcome you, or welcome you back maybe, to Worship and Music Now, uh, part two, or episode two. Uh, I'm Eric Wall, I'm the president-elect of PAM and co-director of this year's Worship Music Conference, and I work in Montreal in the summers as well. And on these Thursday evenings together, we're getting a jump start on forming the Worship and Music conference community. You're asking, as we all are, what will it look like this summer? We still don't fully know, but we do know that we'll gather in some way. Sometimes in my own mind, I have lightheartedly compared this conference to Brigadoon, a kind of mystical, wondrous community that springs to life once a year. But now more than ever, I think something else is truer than that, that this conference is really a year-long community in all kinds of ways, and this year, these Thursday evenings are one of those ways. And on this Thursday evening, our conference faculty member is David Eicher. If you sing from the hymnal Glory to God, then every week Dave's work is connected with yours, since he was the hymnal's editor. And for worship and music this year, he is our song leader and service organist. And so, Dave, we're glad you're here with us tonight. And um, just maybe talk to us, what are, what are in your thoughts about this conference right now and the nature of being together and the themes that uh, we're dealing with in this conference? Sure, thanks, Eric. Um, it's great to be with everybody in this way. It's, uh, as we all know, it's a little strange uh, to be trying to connect with each other over these ways, uh, especially for those of us of my generation for whom this kind of technology wasn't even anything we ever dreamed of doing, let alone having to rely on it for our, uh, for our everyday existence. But, um, but here we are and uh, we're, we're trying to make the best of it. So I appreciate this, these, this time together. Um, I'd say What's been big on my mind uh, is probably what's been big on everybody's mind that's interested in the Montreat Worship and Music Conferences, and that's um, how, how does this happen? Is it going to happen? What are we going to do? And and so, um, you know, that's in the back of my mind, I think, all the time in, in the work that I'm, I'm doing now to prepare. Um, so... For instance, today, in, in anticipation of this conversation that we were going to have, um, I started looking back again through the plans for the major worship services that will be happening daily and, and looking through the scriptures and reading through the hymn texts and thinking, how are these different now than they were a year ago? Uh, when we began some of the detail work, or even further back, actually, but but within this last year. And it's, as we all know, those of us who love hymns and love congregational song, every time we sing something, a different piece of it may jump out at us, depending on what our context is at the moment for singing. And when we were working on Glory to God, you know, there would be people who would say, oh, surely you aren't going to put that hymn or song in the book because nobody sings that. And I could guarantee you that within a week, I would have an email from somebody saying, please make sure you leave in the same hymn the other person talked about because it's one of our favorites and we sing it all the time. And, and that was a constant reminder to me that it's context so often of what we're doing. And so these hymns and these scripture passages right now have a completely different context. That is, parts of it are jumping out and hitting me much harder than what I had anticipated they would. Those of us who have been to Montreat before for worship and music, or for one of the other conferences there, but particularly for our case, worship and music, you know that many of us live for that first hymn on Sunday evening, when we get to hear you know, there's hundreds of people in full voice singing out a hymn, uh, and it just, we all kind of think, ah, oh, we've arrived, you know, now we're here. And for those who haven't ever done it before, but maybe we're anticipating that uh, and, and wondering what it would be like, um, it seems to me that whether we are able to gather by the hundreds or by 10, or however we are able to gather, it's that 
it's that memory or that anticipation that makes the singing of the music a communal event, whether we actually are there or not. Because I think our spirits get gathered together, whether the physical production of the sound happens all at that time or not. I mean, you could, you could think of a lot of different examples. Um, you could think of a hymn that's a particular favorite of yours. And when you begin to hear the melody or begin to hear the words and your mind goes immediately back to some important event when you sang that or when you heard someone sing it, um, it's, it's the beyond the rational part of this that we do that I think uh, becomes so powerful, uh, particularly when we're talking about a theme of um, the great cloud of witnesses. Um, I heard so many stories through the hymnal process of people saying, you know, th logically, I shouldn't like this hymn. Theologically, I shouldn't like this hymn. But it's one of my absolute favorites. And I think the reason is because I can remember sitting on my grandmother's lap, leaning against her half awake while she sang and the vibrations of that hymn become a part of my body. And I think those are the kinds of stories that can still connect us as a group, even when we're separated, uh, whether it's by a pandemic, whether it's by some other kind of illness uh, or physical uh, disability or financial reasons or whatever the reasons are that keep us apart. Those are the kinds of events that can pull us together, I think, with the power of song, even though we're not singing them together. Um, so I've just pulled out one. Um, that I want to want to read the text and and have you think about it now in the context of what we're dealing with. This is a, a hymn that's anticipated for uh, one of the daily services where the theme is on healing, um, and um, this particular hymn is is a Ruth Duck text. It's her paraphrase of Psalm 42 and 43, as pants the deer for living streams. Uh, it's number 778 in Glory to God, if you want to, want to look it up uh, and follow along. But um, the text just speaks to me. You are asking what's different now than earlier in the planning process. And while we had these images, these broad images of healing, when we were talking about this service before, these words now take on a new significance. Uh, so I just kind of want to read them and, and then reflect just a bit on, on maybe a couple of the phrases. As pants the deer for living streams in dry or desert space, I thirst for you, O living God. I long to see your face. Oh, how I miss the happy days when with the throng I'd praise. Take courage now, my trembling heart, for God will take your part. Tears are my bread both night and day. Fools crush me, soul and bone. They laugh and ask, where is your God? I hope in you alone. Why cast me off? Where have you gone? Why is your grace withdrawn? Take courage now, my trembling heart, for God will take your part. Deep calls to deep, the billows roar. They cover me with pain. I cry for healing and for home. God, show your love again. Without your people, who am I? Without you, I will die. Take courage now, my trembling heart, for God will take your part. Oh, send your light to guide me home, my Savior, guide me still. With shouting pilgrims, I will come to climb your holy hill. Then with the harp, I'll sing your praise, my happy voice I'll raise. Take courage now, my trembling heart, for God will take your part. So a powerful text, I think, in any situation, because there's always something in us that's longing for healing. But, but just think about how a couple of those phrases, at least for me, jumped out. Oh, how I miss the happy days when with the throng I'd praise. It's that yearning for being able to be with those we love and in the community of faith singing God's praise together with one voice in one place. And then the other line, um, with shouting pilgrim, I will come to climb your holy hill. And I think of those gorgeous mountains around the Montreat Conference Center and how so many of the conferees 
do a, a climbing of those hills and the joy with which the youth groups race each other to the top and uh, and us old folks see if once again this year we can make it up to Lookout Point or not. Um, and I think that words like that, the next time we are together in Montreat, whether it is in person this summer or whether it's a next summer, whenever it might be, I can just imagine that these kinds of words are gonna take on a whole new powerful significance for us. That, <clears throat> Dave, that's so great. And when you were reading the text there, that same line just popped out at me the shouting pilgrims in the holy hill that was just all i could see was look out and and even just simply driving driving through through the gate and winding towards the auditorium there's a ascent uh, a feeling of ascent going up to something um wondrous that we that that we always um have and as you say whether whether we're there this year or next, whether we're together in this way, um, uh, what connects us um, are these powerful songs and memories. Um, thanks for sharing all that. That's just really, that's really a gift. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, friends, this has been our second Worship and Music Now. And um, as you can, uh, as you can hear, our, our congregational song is in, um, eminently capable hands for this summer uh, however we uh, however we end up doing it so hang in there with us um, uh, we know you're uh, eager for information we're eager to give it to you as soon as it becomes clear uh, we at pam are in constant conversation with montreat and as soon as things are discerned into what they're going to be we'll keep you in that loop um, in the meantime um, keep your conference planning team and faculty members in your prayers. Uh, keep Kelly and Andrew in the PAM office in your prayers um, as they do this work. And we'll keep you in our prayers. And uh, as we uh, look forward to our, our togetherness this summer, and as we're even now uh, in this community. Next week on Thursday night, we'll be with uh, Ann Jones, who is uh, many of you know uh, already from Montreat. Um, along with Hannah Garrity is the conference, uh, the artist for this conference, and um, and we'll look forward to seeing you again on Thursday night. Um, if you have questions for us, don't hesitate to contact us and let us know. Uh, David Eicher, thanks again for being with us, and we will see you all next Thursday evening. Good night.